So it's often claimed that you can't take the skies from me. But that's a lot of space to lay claim to. Hi, Rick here and we're going to take a look at constructing a map of the known verse. Full disclosure, this video has been split into parts as I wasn't satisfied with the amount I'd have to drop to make it all fit into one video and still have it released on time. So part one will cover the core and border worlds. And this was a nightmare to record with lots of words that I'm not familiar with from all sorts of cultures, and I'm not multilingual like your standard resident of the verse so I apologise for any mispronunciations. Most of this information comes from the complete and official map of the verse, and while it expands upon space as seen in the show, it was never shown off exclusively in the program, so consider this video with that in mind in case a new series contradicts this information. It could still happen. It's not going to happen. From the year 2020 to 2028, a survey of the stars revealed the location of a star cluster, termed 34 Tauri 2020, and it was discovered that it had many planets and stars orbiting a central point. Over the following decades, Earth became overcrowded, resource starved, and no longer able to support the population of humans on its surface so a mass exodus was planned to this newly discovered star cluster, which observation had revealed to have an unusually large number of terrestrial worlds, worlds with a solid surface. While these exoplanets varied in shape and distance from their suns, terraforming technology had been created that could alter every aspect of a planet, including gravity, to make it resemble Earth, at least from the surface. Blue skies and all. The solar system had been used as the testbed for much of this technology, but many of our local planets were deemed too resource poor, and Earth itself was running low, so sharing wasn't an option. Multi-generational ships were launched from every country towards the Tauri Cluster in 2097, and over the years these cultures mingled and created a blended society of languages and traditions. In 2220, these ships arrived in the White Sun System, the targeted star in the middle of the cluster, also known as Baihu, the White Tiger. This system consisted of 14 planets and many more moons. Londinium, the second planet, was the first settled, and the beginnings of the Allied Union of Planets was established based on the Global Exodus Alliance from Earth. To this day, 2518, the Parliament remains in control of the systems from its seat on Londinium, and its capital city is New Cardiff. It had two moons, Colchester and Balkern. Starting from the Sun and moving outwards, we have Bernadette and its two moons, Nautilus and Spinrad. Bernadette was the second planet to undertake terraforming, and its capital is New Paris. Sinan is the home of many learning institutes, and the Companions Guild is also based here. Due to a large number of settlers originally being of Eastern origin, it has a stronger Eastern aesthetic than Londinium and shares much of the Alliance's power structure. Many even consider it a capital planet. It has four moons, Aryan, Xiaoji, Zhengxing, and Yunnan. It's only 100 kilometers larger than Earth that was too, so that's nice. The fourth out is Lianjuing and its two moons, Tiantan and Fu. Wait, no, sorry, Fu. Gonghi has one moon, Xingyun. Rubicon is the sixth planet, then Osiris. Osiris is the home planet of Simon and River Tam, and houses numerous prestigious universities, though not all was shiny. There were shadier sides, known as the blackout zones, where security feeds couldn't reach and where shady dealings went down. Tannhauser and Epueva were its moons. Qin Shi Huang orbits the white star and is a protostar. This was originally a brown dwarf that was helioformed into a new sun in 2271. Orbiting this small star is Santo and its two satellites, Tethys and New Luxor. Then we have Valentine and its moons, Selene and Johns. Bellerophon houses numerous luxury estates that float over its considerable surface oceans, and it has three moons, Tyrins, Panthus, and Path. Ariel marks the port of call between the inner and outer systems, and is a major trade hub. This was the planet that Simon Tam planned the hospital heist for the Serenity crew on. Areopolis, Shiva, and Poseidon 
are its moons, and Areopolis is the leading exporter of pharmaceuticals. Albion, with its moon Avalon, are next out, named after the old name for England. Then another protostar. Lux was originally a brown dwarf too before being ignited. Orbiting were moons, now planets, Persephone and Pelorum. Persephone had two moons, Hades and Renau, and was considered rather rough for a core world. Well, rough by Alliance standards. Kaleidoscope was the moon of Pelorum. An asteroid belt known as the Halo effectively marked the edge of the core worlds and an end of what was considered the civilised space. Among its rocks, though, were several dwarf planets, such as Duka and Ra'amiran. These two have their own moons, and Ra'amiran is a low priority candidate for further terraforming. Orbiting the White Star system are two suns of equal distance. These two are the Red Sun system and the Georgia star. The planets that orbit these two stars are considered the border worlds, and many of these declared for independence during the war in 2506. The star of the Georgia system was called Huanglong, the Yellow Dragon, and we'll start here. Again, from the closest planet and moving out, we have Ezra, orbiting which is nasty bastard Adelainishka's station, and the planet's moon, Herschel. The next planet out was Regina, a planet where the terraforming had caused a degenerative musculature disease called Balden's Malady. Paradiso and Hancock were two towns on its surface. Boros is the third planet and the Alliance hub of operation for the Georgia system. It had one moon, Ares. A world called Kerry was fourth, with its satellite Madcap. Thaka and Priam are two planets that seem to orbit each other as they pass around the Georgia Sun. A strange phenomena, and I'm not sure if it's natural or the result of terraforming. Prophet is next. That's about it there. The next planet out is actually a gas giant, Elfame. Though the planet cannot support life, some of its moons may be able to. Du is the next planet out with its single moon, Yama. Athens, beyond that, one of its moons is called Whitefall, and that appeared in the first episode of Firefly. Its other moons are Anui, Agaberton, and Ormonst. Then there is a second gas giant called Daedalus. Its moon was called Box, and is inhabited, being terraformed in 2360. Beyond that lies New Hope and its three moons, Commons, Splendor, and Godsfors Aiken. Well, that last one is still being terraformed, so hopefully that's not its official name, but judging from what we've seen so far, it could be. Three Hills is the twelfth planet, and it has three moons. New Lafayette, Conrad, and Bob. Yes, there is a moon called Bob. Meadow had two moons, Saliot and Mia, and all three bodies were being terraformed. Then, on the outer edge of the system, there was another converted protostar called Murphy. Orbiting this were three planets, Hera, Aphrodite, and Shadow, which also had their own satellites. Hera was orbited by Bullet and Eris, and was the location for the Battle of Serenity Valley, the climactic moment for the independence and the namesake of Malcolm Reynolds' Firefly ship. Sturges, Hill, Thornley, and Anson orbited Aphrodite, while Branson's Mark, Ocelumbria, and Summer Fair spin around Shadow. Opposite the Georgia system, orbiting the White Star at near equal distance, was the Red Sun, Zugue, the Red Phoenix. But that's where we'll have to leave this part, as already the skies are getting a mite crowded. As you can see already, the core worlds are much more established, with many worlds in the Georgia systems not even finished terraforming yet. The outer planets are also much more sparsely populated, and receive very little aid from the core worlds. It's understandable that humanity had to start somewhere when they first arrived, and the middle system is the obvious choice. But many feel that once the core was established, then that was where the effort stopped. 
So I'm already working on part two, which will cover the second border worlds and beyond. So thanks for watching, and it'll be out by next Friday. I haven't even covered the system with the most worlds in it yet. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time for part two. Goodbye.